opening range breakout. So what is an opening range breakout? Well, a little bit of it is in the title. It is a range that we define at the open of the market. And once we've defined that range, we then look for price to break out of it for an opportunity to trade. This is one of the first strategies that I ever learned. And I found it in a library book dated back into the 1980s. As you can imagine, just having delayed intraday data back in the 80s cost an absolute fortune. And the strategy that I had run across was a one hour open range breakout. And of course they were using delayed data too. You can imagine the struggles back in the 80s to trade such a concept. But over the years with everything getting more and more uh, fast with the internet and the way that we can transmit data, the open range has adapted to really the trader. So we're going to discuss the different ranges that we can use and why you perhaps might want more than one approach. So some traders, for an example, are dedicated to looking at the macro concept, what's going on in Europe, what happened overnight through the Asian markets. And if your approach is that way, Europe closes at 1030 using a one hour open range would give you the opportunity to see the market open at 930, build itself a range into 1030, and then after the EU closes to define any breakout at that point as a tradable opportunity. Okay, there's a lot of merit to that, but there is econ that often comes out at 10 o'clock. So using a 30 minute time frame, if you're focused on that um, intraday micro impact, then you might want to focus on waiting for that first 30 minutes, seeing whatever econ we might get, and then trading that breakout. Some traders like to use a 15 minute chart. It makes sense then for those sort of traders to set up on a 15 minute open range. And then of course, you've got your dedicated five minute traders who live and breathe for the five minute chart. And that's all they look at. Of course, there are scalpers who, you know, tend to hang out on the one minute chart. And there's those of us who like using tick charts. Now tick charts complicate the situation just a little bit because it's not using time, right? It's using ticks. So how exactly do we want to set up an open range breakout if we're going to use a tick chart? Well, interestingly enough, the way that we would do that is we would actually use first pivot high, first pivot low. It's an interesting concept. We can show an example here. We'll just go over to uh, the futures market where I know what the tick size is. And we'll take a look at how this can be defined using first pivot high and first pivot low. So here, for an example, we have our intraday in the darker blue and the uh, Globex or the pre-market hours in the lighter shaded area. So market open, we set our low of the day and we ran up and set a high and then we pulled back. That could be defined as first pivot low, first pivot high, and there we go. We've got our open range. Now, this is a little bit of interpretation. You could have used this lower pivot and considered that the first pivot high. There's different indicators that you can use to define how much of a pullback you need to have before you consider that the higher end or the lower end of the pivot. But either one of those would be fine. I like the one that I had originally chose. You can see that when price finally did break out of it, we came back down and retested that zone. And then we continued with the breakout. I call that a Busby by the way, but whether or not we define it as a Busby, price was in a range. It kept testing the range until it broke out and then it pulled back to old resistance, validated that resistance as a new support and then continued with the breakout. So open ranges first have to be defined by you, the trader. There is no right one or wrong one, certainly not a better one or a best one. It all comes down to what you're trading. It also comes down to the approach that you're trading. Parabolic movers, things that open and just run right out the gate, they're not going to set a range. They're just going to explode and go. That often confounds traders who are waiting for this dedicated thing, right? This, they want something that's going to open, pause, set the range, and then give them a breakout. Let's just go ahead and use a five minute open range for a moment. Now there are some tools out there that can automate this process for you, but you're really going to want to define it by using your drawing tools at first. Kind of get familiar with the concept and take advantage 
advantage of what those drawing tools have to offer. So an open range breakout. I'm gonna use a five minute and this is the first five minute candle. From that point, I could draw my high, draw my low and I can do that as soon as the first five minute candle closes. At this point, all I need is for price to go and to break out of that range and I've got an open range breakout. Interestingly enough, we can do this same thing using something called quadrant lines and we can project that measurement upwards. So what I'm projecting here is 50% of the original move. The original move is this five minute candle. So we measured that five and then we project it upwards 50% and 100%. So if I just take this box and set it up here, we can see it was 100% of the move, but we kept going. So let's add more levels. Now we can see that we made it to uh, 150% and then we pulled back. We came back up, tested that, broke out of it again, but we failed to get to 300 and we ended up with a tweezer top and down we went. And we have not yet managed to get past that level since. That 300 did get tagged though, right here. It says 300, but if this is our original five minute and this is 100% of the first measurement, then this would be 200%, right? It's, there's 100% here and 100% there. The reason it has the word or the number 300 is because from our original measurement, we had zero to 100 drawn right there. You can see the 100 label. So if that's zero to 100, the next measure would be 200 and the next measure would be 300. But in reality, we just measured this, set it up 100% and set it up 200%. So I like to define my day this way. And really when you get that first five minute candle, one of the things that you can do right off the bat is you can snap this in both directions because at the start we might not know necessarily which way the market's going to go now on this one we were already trending up into the open so we kind of had a pretty good idea that it was going to break out and go but if it had been sideways coming into the open it could have been a 50 50 right really didn't have to um, have a bias one way or the other we could just define both sides let it break out and trade whichever way it broke by measuring it out this way we kind of get levels in place right and this is not new this is something that's been around if we consider it for a long time things like pivot points i'm going to just set person's pivots here used the wrong one and that would give us our pivot points r1 and s2 so you know that's what it calculated before it had actually run up and broke out but floor pivots generally have the floor pivot s1 s2 s3 floor pivot r1 r2 r3 right so it's kind of the same concept when we're using those drawing tools like the quadrant lines so we've been working on a five minute defining that high and the low and then looking for a break out. If you're going to use an open range breakout strategy, this is a good start because at least we know how to define that high and low, but you're going to want to add more to that if you're actually thinking about getting the trade. Remember, we want to see an increased volume if we're going to trade breakouts, right? That's part of the defining characteristics that the breakout is supposed to be done with momentum. We want to see a lot of participation. We want to see that increased volume. That's really hard to see at the open because that's where a lot of volume is anyways. So it's hard to define if we're seeing increased volume when really we're just seeing the open volume. So that's really hard to kind of wrap our head around. And that's why using a five minute open range can be a little tricky for newer traders. Your open range and and your open volume are so intermingled that it's really hard to see if you're getting breakout volume or if you're just getting the open volume. But if you use a 30 minute chart or even a 15 minute chart, you're a little farther away from that first bell ring and then you could see that breakout volume when we do begin to break the range. There's been a lot of studies done over the years. Uh, some very famous people along the way has said that the market can change direction within the first 30 minutes of the day, no matter how bullish we are or no matter how bearish we are. And it can do that 50 percent of the time five zero so a coin toss no matter how bullish the market is at the open you have a 50 50 chance of seeing it turn around and go the other direction well i mean that really kind of ruins the strategy a little bit right but there was another study done that said price will stay inside of its range 70 percent of the time so if we break out of it within that 30 minutes so if we break out of it then we're in that 30 percent right we're in the the upper echelon of a strategy that's defining itself, right? So that's something to consider. If you give it a 30 minute open range and then price breaks out of that, 
it's very likely that it's going to continue the breakout. Those are just stats, right? And stats do change over the time. So it also depends on, you know, if you're trading just regular equities, if you're trading, you know, index ETFs, sector ETFs, volatility. It also really kind of depends on why it's breaking out. Did it have earnings that day? Was there news, a catalyst that gave it its own reason to move? Or is it moving with the broad general market, right? Like today I'm looking at a firm for this video and a firm's just kind of doing its own thing at first glance. But if we start looking around at the broader market, a lot of markets today look just like a firm does. On the other hand, if we go and look at something like the indexes, kind of has that same setup. What you want to do is really consider the approach of your open range. How are you going to define the time frame that you want to use? Are you really focused on the macro concept, what's happening around the world with Japan, Europe, the other markets, uh, and how they're going to impact our market? Are you focused on the micro, uh, key economic events, earnings, dividends, pre-market news? Are you focused on you know, trading a, a really small time frame, like a scalper sort of approach? Or are you looking to take trades that might last longer than a few minutes, maybe an intraday swing or, uh, you know, an intraday scalp to where you're in it longer than five minutes and you're looking to hold, you know, for a, a greater period of time? These sort of questions will help you define which one of the open range you want to use. There really is no wrong one, but you want to pick one that suits your goals and that suits you as a trader. I know a lot of traders who really like that one minute chart and they just wouldn't feel comfortable using a 15 minute chart. And I know a lot of traders who love the 30 minute and they would not want to trade a five minute chart. So use an open range that suits you. Now, another point to all of this is that even if I did want to use a 15 minute or a 30 minute open range, I don't necessarily have to be on that 30 minute or 15 minute chart. One of the things that you can do, let's just go to a 15 minute chart for a moment. You can go to the chart time frame that you want, line out your open range, and then you can go back to the chart that you want to trade on. So for an example, I marked this on the 15 and now I'm back down in my five minute chart. We could do the same thing, right? On a higher time frame, like a 60 minute, marking that 60 minute high and low, and then drop back down into the smaller time frame that we want to trade as well, right? There really is no wrong way to go. What you want to do is develop your rules, write them out, what's your time frame going to be, what kind of volume do you need to see before you can participate in the trade? Is there a time where you won't wait the full time frame before you enter? And once your rules are established and you get all of them triggered, you've got your trade. All right? So what is an open range breakout? It is time and it is price combined. We set a time frame. We mark price from its high and its low. And once we get that breakout, we have our trade. The most popular time frames for this is the 60, the 30, and the 15. In all of the old material that's been around, honestly, uh, since the 80s or longer, this has been around. But the time frames continue to get shorter and shorter. So while I'm mentioning what is popular, it's because People who have wrote about a one-hour chart have been writing about one-hour charts for 40 years, right? And people who's been writing about 15-minute charts, well, think about how often or when did we get data that was so fast it was no longer delayed and we were getting up to the minute, minute by minute, second by second charts. Because that's when these open range breakouts really started to become popular, right? No more delayed data. People were able to trade intraday charts and the time frames just getting, getting smaller and smaller. There's a lot of popular trading platforms now that offer intra minute charts, 30 second charts, 10 second charts. So there really is no wrong way to go. 
what will really help with this is if your ability to read candles has been worked on a little bit. For an example, we got a firm here, and I've got a five minute chart, and we'll just use that five minute open range high. So I've got this very, very first candle. And one of the things that I noticed as a person who likes to read price action is where did that candle close? Did it close above its own 50% mark? And if so, did it close above the 75% mark? Because a candle that closes near its highest point, well, that's a very bullish candle, like this candle here. That's a very bullish candle. It had almost no wick on the bottom. It had no wick on the top. And it ran the whole time, closing at its highest point. That's way more bullish than this one that went high, came back down, and then closed. But it did close higher than its 50%. So it had a minor bullish bent to it. We could see back here where price was stale, stagnant, and then it popped to the upside, closed at the high, closed at the high, closed at the, you see how it works, right? So if you're able to read price action, you will better analyze that first candle, whatever candle you choose to use, the 30 minute, 60 minutes, 15 minute. You want what we call OCR approach, one candle reversal. You want the ability to analyze that one single candle and be able to make an informed decision about what's going on in price action within that candle. We're on a five minute, but there was five one minute candles that made that five minute bar. So once we define this range, we could, if we were scalpers, drop down into that lower time frame, and already we could establish tradable opportunities. There's the trend with the pullback and the breakout and the play, just like that. All right? So open range breakout.